afternoon YouTubers. Back here with the Gentry. Here she is in all her glory. She's had a bit of a, a major strip down. Um, it's still, the machine is still, I mean, the engine is still under warranty. But um, I got in touch with the people I bought it from. And they said, send it back. Well, I didn't want to send it back because I was just having a little bit of trouble with the um, check valves. But I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I think it's just made a little bit of made a little bit of dirt in there. Uh, I've actually stripped them down. Now these these check valves. That's it. Normally, they have a nut on the top so you can get the ball out. But this particular type, this part goes into the into the boiler, and this part this part goes. Um, yeah, that's the that's the in in part, and that's what's going out. So this part, this part comes off, and you can get to the ball. So it sits like that, which is a bit blinking awkward, really. Um, most of my most of the lads at the railway, my railway club, haven't seen this type before. Um, so what you've got to do, you've got to undo. Undo this pipe here and then push it to one side and then undo it. Well, I didn't know that, so I, I just stripped it all down. But to get them out, they go each side, one there and one over there. I'll show you how they fit. So they fit. I'll show you without dropping everything. They fit like that. That fits on top of there. That goes in. But I do like the adjuster because you wind them in, so you can get them vertical, and then all you do is run run the nut, the locking nut up to the uh, to the boiler with the washer on, obviously. So yep, yeah, I've stripped everything off as you can see and what I did I put them in um, a white vinegar I didn't get anything too strong I just got white vinegar and it's, it's really worked a treat they've really come up I bought what I am going to do as well I'm changing I'm changing the gauge glasses uh, this one's broke anyway yeah, where's that one? Yeah, that one, that one was broke inside, inside the cup. I also got a uh, good old bunch of silicon uh, O-rings. Cost me about £7 for all them, and they're, they're brilliant. But yes, uh, I will give you a tip. If you have got this particular engine, to get the uh, cab roof off, there's there's eight screws, uh, two here, two there, two over there, and there's two over there. The hardest part is moving this false whistle. This false whistle turns a little bit so you can get it off. Because there's a hole in the back of the roof, in the front of the roof, there's a there's a square hole there, look. And that whistle goes through that hole. Well, it's really hard. It's really hard to get it out. I was just trying to force it out, which is wrong. But these little wires, the obviously these are fake pipes. There's a hole there. That one goes into there, and this one swings up and actually goes into the back of the front of the roof. We have to gently pull them down, pull it out, and then turn this gently because there's this part here, this part I've got my finger on, actually goes in 
to the front of the roof. So you just turn it gently, don't force it because it's a lovely cast, absolutely. I thought it may have come undone, but it doesn't. But yeah, I'm just waiting for, yeah, I'm, I'm changing the glass, the glass anyway, because I want the one with the, um, I don't know the proper name for it. Um, it's got the red line down the back. So it, when you've got water in the glass, it magnifies it and it goes a lot wider. So you've got a thin line of red and then when you when it magnifies, obviously if you hold uh, something behind a glass jar, it will magnify it. So also using Loctite 542, which I've been told to use. I've cleaned all the joints. As I say, they've been in the vinegar. Um, yeah, and it's cleaned, it's cleaned up really well because I was a bit dirty. Because you can see the rest of the engine, the boiler, it's filthy. But I will give you a tip. Before you take the nuts off. Oh, I've got my arm in there. Hang on. Before you take the nuts off, if you can see that, you see that nut there? What that nut does, that nut will just drop straight down right under the engine. And it's a right swine to get out. What you have to do, under three of them to get to strip all this out. And there's one out down here as well, look. I can show you that one, that might be a better one. Yeah, put a put a cable tie underneath it so it can't drop down. And there's one there as well, that one. Because they, they go, they go right underneath, they go right underneath there into all the pipe work, and they're really hard to get out. Um, bit of jiggery pokery. Took me a, took me a few minutes to get them out. Yeah, just put yourself a cable tie around there. That's my tip of the day. Anyway, I'm going to leave you there then. It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it is so, it is so fiddly. Just to get these check valves out, I've had to take out, I didn't have to take all of this out. I took it out because I wanted to clean it and also I wanted to um, fit these new, uh, gauge glasses and I'll give it give it a bit of a spruce up it's it's not even a year old yet but uh, just keep on top of it keep everything clean well oiled it, it before I run it before I take it to the track I get it on the bench and I oil everything absolutely everything and after the run I drain her off Blows, blows, she blows down, drain, drain all the water out. Also, undo all of these, undo all your valves. I'll put a drop of oil on them and I'll just leave them open then and then bring it home and then clean it all up and uh, take her out for the next day. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely engine. Everybody, everybody admires it. You know, the detail on it and everything else. There are a few little things on, on one's water on it. But it's, it's nothing major. But I'm thinking, because I use the axle pump, the, not the, sorry, the axle pump, the hand pump, which, which is in there, I think I'm putting a lot of stress on the actual um, clack valve itself, I think, because that's that's the one I had the trouble with. It was blowing back. I had steam coming up into the into there, so that means the ball hasn't sealed. The pressure of the loco hasn't sealed the clack valve up, so it's letting steam go back into there and water and of course that drains the boiler which is very dangerous 
so I'm just wondering if I start filling it in a different way uh, I'll, I'll have a word with the lads at the, uh, at, the, uh, at, the, at the track tomorrow see if there's a better way I don't want to keep taking the safety valves out because that's um, could could fill it up with the valve there. Could fill it up there. Put a pipe on. Yeah, whichever way, whichever way you do it, it's got to go past the clacks into the boiler. I think uh, I think it does. I'm just trying to get my head around this plumbing. This is my first big steam engine. Uh, yeah, it's a five inch scale. Yeah. She, she runs really well, to be honest. It's um, just a shame that. Uh, mind you, the only way to learn is to take some parts off and just get used to. Because the threads, the threads are very fine. And you, if they don't do up with your fingers to start with, never force them. I will say that. I mean, I'm new to this, but I do, I do understand the engineering part of it. And if you start forcing them, it's it's like anything, like like on a car with the brakes. Those those they're very fine threads, as you can see. I can. S Some people don't understand and don't know how to tighten them. You can see how fine that thread is. So it's very easily stripped and it's brass as well. So anyway, I'm going to leave you there then with a last look at the gin tea. There she is. I'm going to leave it there then. I bid you farewell, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.